My name is Shireen and welcome. Uh, this uh, workshop uh, is called Envision 2021. We're going to share more about it in just a few moments. And this actual workshop is done in collaboration with the Arab Institute for Women at LAU. And Lina here, Lina Abirafa, Dr. Lina Abirafa is actually the director of the Institute. And so I'm just going to give you a few moments as well to introduce yourself and uh, to share your word with us, uh, Lina, tonight. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled. I'm watching this chat and everybody's engaged and everybody's on fire and we haven't even started yet. I love it. Um, so I'm Lena. I'm the executive director of the Arab Institute for Women at LAU. Um, if you didn't know, it is the first of its kind in the region. It is 48 years old. It is built on a long legacy of pioneering powerhouse women. Uh, so I am incredibly proud to be at the helm of this institute. Absolutely love it to bits. It's a leader, it's a champion. It's so much of what we try and do in the world. Um, so I'm really honored. And I remember meeting Shireen, I have to say um, six years ago, eight years ago, I don't even remember, but a friend recommended that I attend a uh, discussion by somebody who turned out to be Shireen, who was talking about women's leadership um, and finding your passion and purpose. And I thought, hey, that's my thing. And it was in a charming little bookshop and I walked in and there was this fireball, curly hair and amazing shoes and just buzzing around the room. And I thought, this is my friend. These are my people. And I knew that we would get along and we've been uh, practically sisters ever since. Um, she ignites and inspires everybody around her. She holds up a mirror so you can see who you are, what you want, what you're doing. Uh, what you should stop doing. Uh, she liberates us all. I read this book and I loved it. And it's the kind of book I want to read every year just to keep myself on track. Um, and I think as women, especially, uh, what we tend to do is get so caught up in the doing of things that we maybe sidetrack the being of things. And one living example is me in this very moment uh, because I am speaking to you from my shower. You probably noticed the background. <laughs> it's a bathroom. And the reason I'm in the bathroom <laughs> is because my house is being renovated. We're in the middle of a pandemic and this is the only quiet place in my house. And all of that to say, we do whatever it takes. It doesn't matter at what cost. And I think that's extraordinary. And that resilience is really part of what um, what moves us and what moves the world, but it's also tiring. And so to have the time to check in with ourselves and with each other and see where we're going in the world, I think is such a privilege. Um, I will leave you with just one thing. Um, the high school that I went to was an all girls school. And the motto is function in disaster, finish in style. And I think that's so much about the way that we live our lives and the way that uh, Shireen shares her values. So I'm gonna turn it over to the headliner and uh, ready to listen in. Thank you all for joining. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much, Nina, for your uh, artful introduction. And we are going to start. Just give me a moment so I can share. Probably, probably never before have you had a dispatch from the bathroom. <laughs> well, this I mean, is... That's... <laughs> That's the first time, but you know, this is, this is the amazing things, the amazing thing about being real uh, uh, and authentic. You know, exactly. it's about, <laughs> this, uh, you know, just before getting on the call, I, I was breastfeeding my son and, you know, and this is life, it's messy. And we're going to talk about this today. So officially, welcome, welcome to Envision 2021. It's about creating a year that lights you up. And um, this is for you, so you're in the right space if you feel dissatisfied with where you are right now, uh, like you should be further along. So let me know in the comments if you relate to that. You need more focus and clarity on what it is that you'd love to achieve this year. You feel everything else in your life is a priority over you, uh, over your goals, over your dreams, over your aspirations. Um, and 
you may be very clear about your goals, but there's no room for play, no room for fun, no room for uh, unscripted for an unscripted life. Um, and this is for you if you feel that you're running on stress and overwhelm all the time, like you have too much on your plate all the time, like you're busy, 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 and there's no time for fulfillment. So if you, really, if you relate to any of these, I would love you to share in the comment, which one you relate to most. So we have focus and clarity, we have, um, okay, so where are we now? Okay, overwhelmed, I'm here, okay, stress, okay, focus and clarity again, all of the above, everything is a priority over me, so, all right, so you're in the right space. So about me, I know that um, Lena introduced me, but for the, those of you who just uh, joined in, uh, my greatest mission is to help ambitious, multifaceted women really trust their unique selves and know who they are and feel enough and go for what they want on their own terms um, in business, in love, and in life. And I'm an ex-brand strategist. Um, I've had 10 plus years experience in corporate. Um, and then I um, had a leap of faith, uh, which I discuss in my book, Do What Lights You Up. And I decided to do what I love, which is a women's leadership expert and consultant in women's leadership. And I coach women specifically. And I also work with team leaders within organizations and also teams who want to be more honest and also want to show up as their true self within their organization. I create uh, online experiences um, and intensives around inner criticism. Uh, so I handle topics around inner criticism, self-trust, uh, creative leadership, authentic leadership, and finding your passion and purpose. Um, and uh, and, and, and also uh, about uh, fulfillment. So I'm a human, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm an artist, I'm an activist, I'm a growth seeker, and I'm a burnout survivor as well, um, which actually was the inspiration for me to share with you the workshop today. I'm also recently an author of the book that Lena shared a few moments ago, which is Do What Lights You Up. And it's my new book. It just got released on the 1st of January of 2021. It's very dear to my heart because it's about the life changing magic of being yourself, of doing what you love and of pursuing your dreams unapologetically. And it's dear to my heart because I wrote it uh, in the middle of my first year as a mom in 2020. Uh, um, with a pandemic, with civil unrest where I'm living right now, and also with uh, a bit of a traumatic explosion that happened in our city. So against all odds, it's out. Um, and so I'm really proud of it. It's about finding your passion and purpose at any age. So what will you learn today? Um, a lot of things. <laughs> you will learn how to reconnect uh, to yourself, because we want to create goals from the inside out. We're used to do things from the outside in. And so we, we, you're going to learn how to reconnect yourself to create um, an exciting and resonating plan for this year. All right. Um, you're going to learn how to put your self-realization, your personal personal self-realization as a number one priority. And you're going to learn how to do less. So I'm going to challenge you in some places to look at things in a different way where you can start creating more time and energy and space for yourself, for your joy, and for your exciting um, uh, projects. And then you're going to learn something very important is how to create boundaries with your energy drains to help you as well create time and space for yourself. Some logistics I want to share with you. This is a 90 minute workshop. Um, it is going to be around 70 minutes and then the rest is going to be around answering your questions. Um, 
we are going to take a pause every now and then so I can check out your, uh, your questions. Uh, if, um, uh, so I'll, I'll check back your questions every now and then or toward Shireen might be frozen. I don't know if you all can hear me, but I think this kind of speaks to exactly what we've been saying, the idea of functioning in our own, <laughs> Shireen is frozen. <laughs> I think that's part of living in Lebanon, living in uh, an emergency and managing in a time of crisis, which is basically what we all do. And I think what we've been doing for the last one year since the onset of this pandemic, especially is managing a disaster and learning how to live and scale down our lives and accept our curbed freedom and our constraints and our fears of the unknown and living from day to day and being unable to plan anything. So what I think is extraordinary about this book, at least for me, is that it has prompted some long overdue self-reflection. And I know it's happened for so many of us in this situation where we feel like it is an enforced um, introspection overdose at least that is what has characterized the pandemic. So many people are having different types of crises, changing jobs, uh, leaving partners, having babies, um, uh, coloring their hair green. You can't really see it in this light. What a shame. Um, um, Shereen is back. I'm back. I got kicked I was, out. I was just I was just talking about my hair. <laughs> okay, I got kicked out. Okay, so I'm back, everyone. I got you. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna put the chat here so I can have a. Okay. I was just talking about how difficult this year has been for all of us with the pandemic. Yes, just so you know where exactly, we're at. <laughs> exactly, and and <laughs> we are definitely going to talk about that. All right, so I'm going back here. The show must go on. So, um, so yeah, so I'll be uh, taking some pauses every now and then at certain places to, uh, uh, to check up on you. Um, and I will go fast. So the reason I'm doing this, I'm doing this for a purpose. You have access to the replay, but where I'm going fast because I want you to go with your guts. There are certain places in that workshop where I'll be going super fast and I want you to have your gut level answer to, uh, um, to, uh, this, uh, to whatever question I am asking. All right, I'm just gonna stop the share for a moment. I'm going to share something with you uh, in the comments. In case you haven't accessed this before, just to make sure you're all on the same page, I'm sharing with you a little workbook so you can, uh, for those of you who like to, um, you know, type stuff, you can have a workbook. I shared it. Oh, wait a minute. I need to share it with everyone. Um, so here you go. So, so you have a link with a workbook. You can follow through with that link for those of you who like that. Otherwise, you can just follow me and put your notes. All right. Great. So I, as I said, I'll be going a little fast. Um, and the reason for that is to go with your gut level feeling. So let's set our intention for today. Keep an open mind and an open heart for whatever happens to you. There's no wrong way of going through this workshop. So just trust, you know, uh, your hut, what I call your hut, which is your heart and gut and dream big. Just put in there, this workshop is for you. That moment is for you and it's for no one else. So put in there whatever feels good to you um, and, uh, and, and, and trust that whatever you write in there is what you need for now. So before we plan, we make our big plan for, for this coming year, we actually um, need to look back 
for a moment. Um, we need to look back because it's important to see what worked, uh, uh, what didn't, and what could be improved. And the reason for that is, is that very often as humans, we have a tendency to go from one thing to the next without just stopping, reassessing, acknowledging ourselves on the things that really worked. And we're just, okay, what's next? What next? What next? Who relates to that? Let me know. So, uh, yeah, so it's important to just stop and acknowledge ourselves in, in whatever we have done so far. So let's see what worked. How was this previous year a great year? And I actually want you to think about it in this terms. What did you overcome? Gut level feeling. What have you accomplished? What have you celebrated or what needs to be celebrated today? So for me, I literally celebrate that I'm alive <laughs> in a physical sense <laughs> and also on an emotional level. So, um, you know, I celebrate that I wrote a book uh, in amidst this, uh, like all of these hurdles, all these challenges. So really celebrate and share with us in, uh, in, in the comments, in the uh, chats, like what do you want to celebrate? What is... Uh, something amazing that happened to you in that previous year against all odds. And what are your small and big wins? You know, very often we're like, oh, it needs to be something big. It needs to be something amazing, but it can be something really tiny. Like, you know, there was this little drawer next to my you know, bed and I just tidied that drawer and it make, made me feel amazing. So let's also talk about really mundane things, really, really tiny, tiny little things that we're really happy. Maybe we were doing a 10 minute walk when we were not walking at all. Maybe we were walking 15 minutes before and now we're walking 30 minutes. Whatever that is, celebrate it. I want to see a celebration in the chats. All right, grew a great garden in the mountains, the time I wanted to trust the outcome, dyed my hair for the first time. Um, I was in alignment with myself. I spent time with my grandmother, a family time. I overcame my heartache as a mom. Um, I lost 30 kgs, signed a new contract. I got involved in sports, amazing. Go, I love you, Ruba, for saying congratulations. Yes, please celebrate more. I want you also, I'm going to push you since you're in that, in that vibe of sharing your, acknowledging yourself. Acknowledge um, who you were to make this happen. Were you brave? Were you courageous? Were you focused? What was the quality in you that made you follow through? What was the quality in you that made it happen? I know that uh, in, like in 2020, I made it a point, I wanted to see my parents and I made everything happen like so we can, you know, uh, see them. So I, ooh, you know, and so what was the quality in you that made you uh, reach that goal today? I want you to start noticing what's the quality in you determination fantastic stubbornness yes resilience perseverance ambition risk taker mindset of growth passion woohoo open my heart lovely love open heart and open heart faith survival skills less angry, believing in myself, acceptance, growth, faith, amazing. Perspective. Amazing, inner peace, lovely, lovely. All right. You're on fire. You're all on fire and And I'm going to share my screen again. 
Okay, so three things you're satisfied with in the previous year. I feel like you have more than three things. If you have more than three things, the more, the merrier, the better, just put it there, write it down, the things that you're satisfied with in the previous year. What needs to change? All right, so usually when we want to change something, um, we feel dissatisfaction, disgust, uh, sadness, uh, confusion, uh, anger, depression, uh, meltdown, overwhelm, you got it. So this is a sign that something needs to change. Are you familiar with these feelings? Have you felt them before? I'm sure, yes, we're all human. I know I have felt them myself. So what we need to look into what needs to change because if we're not looking, if we're not being honest about this step, then everything we do together today does not have any meaning. Again, it's gonna be from the outside in and, and not from the inside out. So let's take a look at our life. And this is really like a general overview. And I want you to be um, very uh, non-judgmental about yourself when you do this, okay? Honest, but non-judgmental. Non so how satisfied are you in every area of your life? And so um, the way you're gonna look at it is very quickly, you're gonna rate it from a level of zero being like not satisfied at all, and 10 being I'm ecstatic, ecstatic about it and absolutely fulfilled, okay? So um, your personal growth, your hobbies, your, your learning, your studies, your life purpose, from a level of zero to 10, how satisfied are you with that? So very quickly, uh, just jot down, um, your level of satisfaction when it comes to your physical space. Your physical space, basically, it's your home, like how you feel within your home space, within your office space, and also within the country that you live in. So it's also the area where you live in. Um, your level of satisfaction when it comes to spirituality, uh, as well, whatever you practice, whatever you, whatever spirituality means to you, whether it's your religious faith or your rituals or your practices, whatever that means to you. This is a subjective overview of your life, okay? So no one is going to see this. No one is going to judge you. Uh, this is very subjective. Your health and wellness and self-care. How satisfied are you with that? Um, your work, your finances, your money, your friendship, your family relationships, and uh, romance with your significant other, uh, intimacy, uh, sexuality, sensuality as well. What is your level of satisfaction in that? So allow yourself just to have a snapshot of what's going on there. And notice the place where needs, like the places where you're super satisfied and the places where it needs more of your attention. So I'm just gonna stop sharing and take a look at what's going on here. All right, again, as I said, this is not an exercise for judgment, okay? This is an exercise for you to, for self-awareness. Uh, you're just, you know, having an overview of what's going on um, and, uh, and just looking at it from this perspective. So very honestly, looking at that, what do you notice? What do you notice needs your attention? What do you notice that, you know, things are great? And where do you notice where you wanna, you want to actually start changing things? So notice the places where you would love to, to change things, to shift things around. 
um, to transform things. Reduce feelings of imposter syndrome. All right. Okay, there are many areas that need your attention. Okay, so we, so we have uh, a focus on health, on spirituality, many areas. Um, reduce the need to be active all the time. I love that. It's permission to do nothing. We forget about that. It's so precious. Uh, sports, self-care, passion to learn. All right, lots of things going on. The self-limiting beliefs, all right. So I'm gonna put myself here and share my screen again with you. I don't know why I can't move my, um, okay, I'm having a bit of a technical thing. I need to move my screen here and share my screen again with you. All right. Alrighty. Great. So we're going to reflect a little bit. Write everything that you're dissatisfied with, which you started doing right now. Probably you have other things that are bubbling up to the surface um write them down be honest we can only change by the way we can only change when we're honest we can only change when we stop giving excuses to ourselves and to others and to the situation and to this and to that the only moment we can change things around is literally when we take responsibility and we say wait a minute um okay this is happening but i'm really not happy with that and very often as women we 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 give excuses we're like oh we're gonna try again we're gonna you know who relates to that you know we're i'm gonna push but no it's not working we need to sit we need to talk i need to look again i need to shift things around so yeah um so in your life uh, I'm, I'm just going deeper into that reflection of looking at what you're dissatisfied with. So we're just going a level deeper to access other things that might be inside. Um, in your life, what is heavy and weighing you down? Uh, whatever it is, uh, might be um, that you have to care for some an elderly person or you have a child that has a chronic illness or something that is related, whatever that is. Um, what do you fantasize about leaving or radically changing? It could be leaving a relationship or leaving a work or leaving a country or, you know, or something that you want to radically change that's been bubbling up inside your heart. And what have you complained about more than three times? Uh, you know, when, when we complain a lot, you know, very often people are like, oh, I feel bad because I'm complaining about this thing. I've been complaining about it a lot. Actually, when we complain about things over and over again, it's an opportunity for change. And it's an opportunity to notice that we're not satisfied with something. And we, we just have to acknowledge it for ourselves. What would you love to never do again? So probably you had experiences this year that made you decide no, this never again. So this is also, it triggers um, uh, something that you feel like you wanna change. So people pleasing, cutting toxic family ties. Absolutely, this is a big topic. Uh, complaining about COVID. This is a reality that we live in. Um, never been committed to any, any human. Uh, see the negative side of staying at home, a wasted time, um, control less uh, others, doing things out of guilt, very powerful. And um, notice what and who is draining your energy. This is not about blame. This is again about awareness. 
because we're later on, we're going to talk about your energy because that's very important. So notice how you are, um, how you're being like, how you're being affected by other people or situations or things, whatever they are. So notice that. Yeah, those are realities that we that we talk about, feeling of overwhelm, of, of being overwhelmed, the system in, in the country that destroys our hopes, living with parents during this pandemic and not being able to go to work. Um, great. By the way, I, I, I just wanna acknowledge you for a moment for being so honest and transparent and open um this is very powerful because know that when you stand with your own truth you're actually opening up the possibility for other participants to also notice wait a minute i also relate to that but i didn't know how to say it so thank you uh for that <sighs> to change things we need to be honest about what's not working for us so thank you for being modest <laughs> um so let's stop with everything that you've shared in, um, in the last few moments. Pick three things that could be better. Three things. You might have a ton. Put them if you want, but at least three things. If, if you know me at all of you, or, or you worked with me, I'm, I'm definitely not going to put any rules on you. So you have more than three things, Put them all. You're welcome, Chantal. Um, so things, three things that could be better and probably more than three things. Um, put them honestly, this is for you, okay? So think one, think two, think three. All right. Caring too much, need to have rest, be more organized, work-life balance. Absolutely, Lina, we are going to talk about it. It's an illusion. Uh, committing to constantly being uh, committed to self-care, study more, uh, letting go of someone I love, uh, saying no and saying hell no, absolutely. Lovely. All right, so we're gonna talk about what's your word for this coming year. I wanna stop on this because this is exciting. And your word could be anything. It could be a movie title, it could be a word. I mean, again, no rules, right? Let's break the rules. So your word could be anything that inspires you where you give a theme for, you, for this year. So my word for, for this year is not a word, it's, a, it's like it's a sentence. It's exploding my creativity and uh, the magic of collaboration. And actually today's event is in collaboration with, with Lina Abirafa, which is a magical collaboration where communities are coming together for growth. And uh, today is actually uh, a realization of my, my word of the year. So what is your word or your words? And it has to be aspirational. It has to make you feel that your heart is open, that it's, it's, um, that you're, uh, you're, you're, you're playing big, that it's calling you forth, that it's making you step forward in bigger, um, into a, a, a more, um, into more courage, into more bravery, into more of yourself, into more of where you want to go or who you want to become. So transformation, productivity, discovery, bridge, fulfill, live the now making a positive difference in my life and in others. Stand in your power and speak up, new start, beautiful. 
So it could be a word, it could be a, a color, it could be a metaphor. I love metaphors. Nothing is impossible, Planeta says. Yeah, smile. Deconditioning of my old self-limiting beliefs. Be the star of my life. Following my passion no matter what. Get out of the shadow. Embrace like life colors. How to find my voice. Meditate. Change. Make sure that you have your word for 2021 because it is going to create a flavor for this year. It's going to guide your focus and attention, which we are going to talk about later on. Get to know my true self. Change, meditate, rainbow, la 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 land, blue. Get out of my comfort zone. Again, this does not need to make sense to anyone. It has to vibrate in your heart and in your soul and it has to make you feel excited. Connect, embrace change, embrace my talents, rejoice. Beautiful. Do it, feel free, yes. Amazing words. So these are your words. Wonderful. How do you want to feel this coming year? And we are, um, we're going to stop a bit on how you want to feel this coming year. Because that's very important. Usually when we go towards our goals, we think that once I reach my goal, I'm going to feel good. Once I um, get that job, I'm going to feel good. Once I have a kid, I'm going to feel good. Once I marry, I'm going to feel good. Once I uh, um, uh, look a certain way in my body, I'm going to feel good. Once I buy this home, I'm going to feel good. Once I buy this car, I'm going to feel good. Once I get rid of this, I'm going to feel good. But the thing is, I want to invite you to look at what if that good feeling you're actually bringing it in the present moment and asking yourself, how do I want to feel right now and start making choices that will support how you want to feel? So I'm gonna invite you to step into that, um, um, that frequency of starting to notice how do you wanna feel? Do you want to feel loved, appreciated? So I want you to say, how do you want to feel? At least yourself, and it's not just one thing, it can be a gazillion things, okay? Um, unleash the feelings. I want to feel enough, I want to feel abundant, accepted, creative, curious, sacred, romance, sat satisfied, hopeful, healed, empowered, happy, uh, energized, um, light, limitless, solid, fulfilled, free, special, appreciated. Notice how you want to feel. And very often, we, 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 when there is a disconnect between our life and us, our core, it's because we are not honoring how we want to feel. And I want to give you an example. I want to give the example of that particular workshop. So I wanted a collaboration and uh, for this workshop. This is a workshop I give uh, once and sometimes twice a year. Uh, it's a paid workshop. And once or twice a year, I actually open it at no cost for everyone uh, to join in for the fun. So today is one of those days. And I wanted to collaborate with someone who is on the same heart frequency, with someone where I feel connected, where there is generosity of heart, where we connected on our mission to support women. Um, and I wanted to honor that feeling because I could, I could do this workshop and partner with so many people. I cannot tell you how many people actually reach out to me to, to do things like this. But I wanted to feel those three and many other feelings. And I felt them with Lena. And so we made it happen. And so I want you to start noticing those feelings 
that are so important for you and how those feelings are related with choices that you make in your life. I'm going to give you another uh, um, a personal choice. Um, and it's related to, for example, having a child. So when I, um, when I uh, decided that I wanted to uh, marry my love partner, <laughs> I said to him, are you okay if we don't have children? And he said, yeah, I'm fine. Are you okay if we do have children? He's like, yeah. Are you okay if we adopt children? And he said, yeah. So I wanted to have this honesty to know that with my love partner, that we can still have a partnership, whether there is a kid or there isn't a kid, or if we have a kid in an unconventional way. And that was so important to me. And uh, it was so important to me also to, to choose a partner that feels that he uh, is going to be with me uh, uh, educating our children and not just someone who is, uh, you know, you're the mom, you take care of the kid and, I'm, and, and I have nothing to do with that. So someone who's connected with a child who is willing to be part of his life and his growth. And so I wanted to feel connection. I wanted to feel honesty. I wanted to feel uh, we're in this together. I wanted to feel that we're on this adventure. And this is what made me take a choice to choose him. So start noticing how your feelings are in relationship to your choice, um, to your choices. Similarly, how they're in relationship to your goals. So when you notice this from the inside out, the choices that you make are more resonant, are more truthful. All right, makes sense? Give me a thumbs up if all of this makes sense. So what will make you feel the way you want to feel in every area of your life? Okay, I have... Thumbs up, every, it makes sense to everyone. We love being in our feelings. We've been, I mean, tell me if you relate to that, but it's been so much said to women, you know, oh, you're being, being you know, too much in your feelings, you know, you're sharing your, our feelings are so important. They are there for a reason. They're our inner compass. And the more we acknowledge them and we stand within the strength of our feelings, um, of how we want to feel, the more grounded we are in our, and the more centered we are within ourselves, because this is an internal intelligence, intelligence that is so personal to us. Nobody can come and know what's how we want to feel. Only we know. No one can come and tell you, you know, the way you want to feel in your, you know, within your relationship is wrong. It's not. It is you. So that's very important. So what will make you feel the way you want to feel in your love life, in your sexuality, sensuality, romance, intimacy with your love partner, um, in your personal growth, your hobbies, your learning, your mission. So I invite you to look how, like what will make you feel the way you want to feel in every area of your life. So very, uh, very uh, kindly start looking at that in your health and wellness and self-care, in your physical space, home, office, in your work, your finances and your money, your friendship, spirituality, and family. And yeah, take a moment and just jot down what will make you feel the way you want to feel in each in every area of your life. Focus time. Who loves the word focus? <laughs> and who doesn't? <laughs> so um, I'm a multi-passionate. And I'm very often have a lot of things that I want to do. And if you are multi-passionate, you will relate to that where there's a lot of things. So who's into checklist and to-do list and, oh my God, I have this creative project and that creative project and that thing and this thing. And then 
overwhelm. I'm a human. There are 24 hours in a day. And I have, I have many roles in my life, you know, being, you know, a parent, a dreamer, a lover, a mother, a, <laughs> uh, a daughter, a, uh, a citizen. Um, so many roles in our lives. And, and then we're like, wait a minute, I have one head, two hands, and I have a lot of dreams. What am I, my, what am I gonna do with all of that, right? And what happens is um, when we're multi-passionate and free-spirited, because I can see most of you, are, all of you are free-spirited in here. Uh, um, what happens is that we're like, wait a minute, I don't wanna be tame. I wanna do everything that I wanna do. And what happens is that once we do not allow to focus that energy in a, in a creative way, which we're going to do together, what happens is that we burn ourselves out and we bruise our self-confidence that, oh my God, I haven't done what I said I was going to do. I'm running behind my schedule. Who relates to that? I have not achieved what I said I wanted. Um, I, um, I, and sometimes we say I'm, I'm a total loser. Uh, you know, if, if we're being so harsh on, on ourselves and sometimes we say, hey, you know, I'm so guilty that I haven't accomplished everything that I can, uh, that I have said I wanted to accomplish. And so that whole energy of creativity and aspiration and project and woo, starts fizzling down because reality comes and we're like, I'm overwhelmed right now, okay? So yeah, and the guilt. So, so, um, so we're going to dive a bit into focus. And remember at the beginning of the session when I told you, I'm going to challenge you to look at things in a different way because I mean, if you're gonna do things in the same way, what's the point, right? So. I'm gonna challenge you to look at things in a different way because the intention, my intention is for you to create things, to do things, to feel good and to make those things that you wanna do actually happen. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Yes, some people from our past just don't make sense to us in our present, absolutely. So determine three things you want to focus on in this coming year. And the three things, by the way, this coming year, it could be the coming year or the coming phase of your life. It's, it's up to you. Uh, you know, I leave it open. I personally uh, would, what I do, by the way, I do <laughs> my own Envision workshop with my love partner uh, once a year. And uh, every quarter we sit down together and we, we check on each other to celebrate, to see if things need to change. So we do that together. And usually I focus on the coming year because it's tangible and it's doable. And I can measure, you know, what have I accomplished in that year? Uh, so determine the three things you want to focus on in this coming year, whatever this may be, it can be inspired from your real of life, it can be inspired from the different, um, uh, you know, uh, areas of your life, from things that came up uh, previously, or things that you want to accomplish during this coming year, okay? Again, it doesn't need to make sense to anyone, it has to make sense to you. So three things you want to focus on this year. Focus one, what is it? <laughs> so whatever it is, write it down. Focus two. And focus three. So these three are going to be your main themes for the year. You can add two more, but I'm challenging you to keep them to three because we wanna we, <clears throat> we wanna do less. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm 
<clears throat> sorry. I've got you. If you need to have a drink, because the idea is focus on a few things because we want to do less. <laughs> and building on that, I am just as guilty as Shireen of juggling so many things. I call myself an octopus. And I think it's part of what, what makes us these kind of chronic overachievers very often to our detriment. Um, Absolutely. And what, we need, what we need to do is give ourselves a break and give each other a break. So Shireen, whenever you're ready to take back the mic, um, it's fun having so, you guys in my shower with me. So the idea is to do less so we can do more. So we can actually notice how much we have um, <clears throat> achieved. So I'm pouring myself a glass of water. All right. So whatever these thing, three things are, <clears throat> just write them down because those are going to be <clears throat> your three goals for the coming year. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, hydrate professionally and personally. Okay, so focus number one. <clears throat> what are the three activities that you will be doing in focus number one? So we're being specific. Because what happens most of the time is we say, oh my God, I'm so excited, I'm going to do this. And then our idea or our focus just fizzles down and we don't have a tangible activity to just put down on our calendar and say this is what I'm going to do so for example so I'm having here my writings let's say focus number one is my writings so what is the first activity you're going to do there it might be I'm just giving an example I'm gonna put an hour a day to write activity two I'm going to share my writing with uh, uh, my <clears throat> Uh, publisher. Uh, activity three, uh, I'm probably going to uh, start um, maybe offering the first uh, chapter for free for my readers and uh, start building uh, my audience for my book launch. I'm just giving an example. Okay, so be tangible in each and every um, uh, uh, each and every one of your uh, goals. So focus number one, what is the activity? Of course, you can have more than three activities. Again, no rules. Uh, you can have one activity, but I'm just, uh, you got the idea. So be specific. For those of you who are sprinters, we're gonna do focus number two. So your focus number two, what are the three activities or more that needs to be done there? <clears throat> so I'm going to give, let's say if your goal for, for this coming year is to express your authentic self, choose in, in what ways you want to express your authentic self. <clears throat> I'm going to. Mute my and I'm I'm gonna talk <laughs> while Shireen get, catches her breath. We've worn her out. I mean, one example actually is when we talk about expressing our authentic selves. Um, I didn't realize that I was a home renovator and a home decorator. Having bought my place and now renovating it, I have done more construction work and getting my hands dirty plumbing, sanding, fixing, painting, polishing, uh, and doing so much house stuff, um, real kind of breaking your nails, super gluing your fingers together type of messy business. Um, I didn't realize I had um, a construction worker slash plumber living in me, and I do. 
Um, so <laughs> I think those things make it really interesting, finding out um, what feeds your passion, especially when you have a lot of empty space. There was never a moment in my life where I thought, oh, I want to just cut the legs off my desk and see what happens. But I own a saw, a drill, and more tools than I had ever seen in my entire life. I'm available for short-term contracts if anybody needs home renovation. <laughs> Lina, you're so funny. <laughs> Shereen, over to you. <laughs> over to me. So, thank you so much. Um, it, it, okay, so there is an important question that Maria asked, which is, can you have more than three focus? Or is the goal to put less on your plate? Again, put more, but the idea is to cut down. So I would say keep it to a maximum of five. But if you want to put, by the way, if you want to put more, I mean, some of the focus can, can roll out for, for the next year, maybe. I don't know. There are no rules. But I would invite you, for those of you who feel very called to have like 10, uh, 10 over there, 10 goals, to notice, uh, to notice how you're being like, you know, to just notice with no judgment when you are wanting to put too much on your plate. So what I would invite you, if you feel that way, put all of those, uh, uh, all of those focus and put the top five. And for those who are in for the challenge, top three, okay? We want to be aspirational and not, you know, uh, not keep on repeating the same uh, <clears throat> patterns. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Hello. Ta-da. So you had time as I was coughing. <laughs> So number three, again, your goal, goal number three or whatever you're focusing on, number three, what are the three activities? Um, look, into, uh, look into other ones that you want to put in there, other goals, goal four, goal five, goal six, goal seven. Uh, yeah. And put the exact activities that you will be doing for each and everyone. All right. Give me a thumbs up if you're all okay and all done. I'm gonna move along right now because I know that you know what it is that you wanna do this year, right? Great. Ta-da, this is an important question. What does success mean to you? And what I mean by success, of course, personal success. And very often people come and say, yeah, success is, you know, what we, what we hear in mainstream, yeah, successful means, you know, you, you have money or, you know, you're happy, but, what is the real measurement of success? What is the real definition, your real definition of success? And it has to be something tangible because the more it's something a bit wishy-washy, uh, the more you're, you're always going to feel like, am I good enough? Did I do enough? Did I you know, reach perfection? Am I, I mean, it's, it's great to be ambitious and we're all ambitious here, but, um, it, we have to be tangible in how we measure our own success. So what does success mean to you? What is your definition of success? <clears throat> so for me, one of my uh, definitions of success is um, to be able to be resourceful and solution oriented in difficult situation or in hard circumstances in my life. So when I'm able to still feel that, oh, I can still find a solution or be creative, I feel, oh my God, uh, I'm in my success zone. So this is my personal definition of success. Another definition of success is 
to be able also to keep my smile probably in difficult situations. So that's my personal definition of success. My definition of success as well is to be able to have a good relationship with the people who really matter in my life and who are part of my life and heart. This is so important for me. So start noticing <clears throat> your definition of success because usually your definition of success taps into a very important core value in your life. And, <clears throat> And it's important for you to know what it is because everything you do is to feel a certain way, is to feel that success. So what does it mean? What does this success mean to you? So how do you measure good enough? You see, success is the feeling that you are good enough. Um, and you're the only one to know what is the metrics for that. No one can put it for you. No one can tell you you reach that measurement. Only you can decide what this measurement is. Only you can decide what the metrics is. So what is your measurement of good enough? So I think we are always good enough. Uh, success is doing what makes me happy and not, not about others. Um, so what, how do you measure good enough? I'm curious, let me know. Your own measurement of good enough. Energy level, absolutely. Satisfaction, where do you feel your satisfaction in your body? <clears throat> yeah, Miriam, I'm, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know me, I always ask the difficult questions. <laughs> and I always ask the difficult questions that I ask myself as well. So I had to ask myself this difficult question, what is the measurement of good enough? And by the way, this is a work in progress. It's not like, um, sometimes I, I actually cross the line of like I keep pushing myself for perfectionism. I mean, I'm sure we have a lot of perfectionists in here. Um, so this is where it's important to put, put the boundary and understand when can I say that it's good enough? Okay, when I do less and still feel satisfied with myself. Good enough is when I feel my heart is big enough when it's fulfilled when I'm satisfied. Okay, keeping my promises, which means thinking hard about what I promise. Powerful. Don't let the perfect get in the way of the good. Powerful. So it's important to consider, uh, to consider that. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go into every point of focus that you've put for your goals, all your goals, uh, and you're going to put what is the metrics? What is the good enough for focus number one? So Maria says, just realized mine is a bit of a problem, gaining the respect of my peers and family. That puts all the control in their hands. Yikes. Well, if you feel that, then try to turn it around. You know, you can say something like, um, I want to feel uh, fulfilled with what I what I'm doing, and uh, and the ripple effect is that it's also gaining respect of my peers and my family. So start step by step. Turn this sentence around in a way that could feel like you are the one who. Awesome. Okay. Great. Um, so. Look at every goal that you've put in there. Goal one, goal two, goal three, goal four, goal five, goal six, 10, 11, whatever. And write what is your success metrics for each and every one. You're writing, what is the success metrics? You wrote 10 hours in a month. You, I don't know, published 30 blog posts, whatever that is. Uh, whatever the metrics is, just put it in there. And you have to be specific. Otherwise, it's wishy-washy. It's 
a dream that's not really going to happen. So it's a way for you to feel good about what you're going to be accomplishing. And it's about you deciding what will be good enough in each and every goal that you pick. Make sense? So put down your success metrics, decide what's good enough, only you decide. <clears throat> so how do you distract yourself, my dears? <clears throat> We're all guilty of distraction, and this is very human. We distract ourselves with our inner thoughts, we distract ourselves with social media, we distract ourselves with other people's issues, uh, we distract ourselves with um, so many things. So start noticing how you distract yourself where you distract yourself, when you distract yourself. And again, this is not a place for self-judgment. This is a place for just being honest, um, being honest where you get sidetracked uh, and where you get uh, distracted from your own goals and aspirations. So you get distracted from your insecurities uh, I always say I will start tomorrow, numbing my strong emotion with emotional eating, um, social media. Right. So we want to create the time and space and the energy. We're all busy with our lives and we're all cramming our schedules with lots of things to do, again, with our checklist, with our goals, with everything, you know, but for our self-realization, for our own personal, personal goals to be on the top of the list and not feel that it's sinking under the pile of other people's demands around us and what's going on everywhere and our family response and our duties and, 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 is to start noticing how we how how we actually are stealing our own time how do we steal ourselves the space in our life how do we steal ourselves the uh, our energy and it's again a self awareness um, on how we are losing our time or how we are cramming our schedules or how we are draining our energy Okay. We're going deeper into that topic, all right? And I know you're sharing, I get distracted by being pessimistic and believing something won't happen. So I, I don't need to try. So um, fantastic. This is, this is an, on the level of the, uh, the, the thoughts that you believe. Uh, spend all my time with my friends and lose time with nothing, not listening to my intuition, beautiful, listening to society, talking and not writing, beautiful. Thank you for your honesty. Anything that is not aligned with you is a distraction, okay? People, parties, practices that don't resonate with you, that don't resonate with your intuition, that don't resonate with your values are distractions. Activities that pull you away from your truth, from your strength, from what you're meant to do in the world, because each and every one of you, you have a mission, whatever that is, whether your mission is to be a fantastic parent or, uh, or, or your mission is to be uh, a mover and shaker or your mission is to um, create beautiful things in the world, whatever your mission is, uh, if it pulls you away from that, it's a distraction, okay? This is where you know um, that you're being distracted. The thoughts that are not in, in sync with your deep trust. So your self-limiting beliefs, your inner critics. So who has inner critics? Like, 
people pleaser, critic, imposter syndrome, I'm not good enough critic, I'm a, a perfectionist critic, somebody has done this before critic, hello, I'm here, cuckoo. <laughs> All these inner criticism and self-sabotaging thoughts um, are distractions. We love this one, right? Relationships that do not support, uh, that do not support us and that not, do not support our full potential are distractions, toxic relationships, uh, people that are party pooper, uh, people that are, um, that are not on the same vibe of where we wanna head with our aspirations. Uh, they can be friendships and uh, closer people and usually the close people, it's, uh, it's a tough thing. But it's also magical to know how to create loving boundaries with those people. Um, it's absolutely doable. Naggers, negative people, absolutely. And anything that is opposite of your pleasure, your strength, uh, and your potential, uh, and, and, and your purpose, and your mission, and your flow, and your zone of genius is a distraction. So we're going to create together what I call the stop doing list. We want to create a list, and this you can go more than three things that you want to stop doing. Anything that is draining your energy. Anything that is distracting you. So it's your stop doing list. So stop, I want to stop doing that overthinking. Stop hating myself. Yes, what else? Negative thoughts, fear, stop feeling guilty. Caring too much. Live without a timetable. Control everything, procrastinating, self-sabotage. Thinking, I'll fix the, this later being home with my children 24 seven, family issues, brilliant. Put it on your list, job insecurities. What do you wanna stop doing? Delay, what else? What do you wanna stop doing? What are your energy drains? So notice who, what is draining you. Notice where you're draining, like where you're wasting your energy as well. So I'm sure you're building a beautiful stop doing list and you're, what else do you wanna say no to? And I want you to say no in the, in the, in the chats, like no to what? What do you want to say no to? No to what? So this is still part of your stop doing list. No to drama. No to self-hatred. No to judging my body. See how it becomes more powerful when you say no? No to anger. No to toxic people. No to trying to control every situation. No to people pleasing. No to perfectionism, no to judging myself, no to overworking, no to allowing people to pull me down, no to negative thoughts, no, 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 no. If you can stand up wherever you are, <laughs> I want you to stand up and to say no, like say it, you know, say it aloud. Stand up and say it aloud. 
no to, to these people, no to uh, listening to, the, to that person's complaint, no to wasting my time on a conversation uh, for half an hour that could be actually uh, be done in two minutes, no to giving my power uh, to people and situation, no to this, no to that. If you could stand up and just really soak up the power of your no, okay? I want to know who's doing that no standing up and really saying aloud what you say no to. <laughs> I would love to know who's saying, who's actually doing that. <laughs> it's important to give the message to your body. It's important to feel that energy in your body and not only to uh, leave it from the level of the head. It's very powerful because um, once you say it aloud, when, once because right now I'm saying no, and as you can see, I'm like super hyped up. I'm not only saying the no's that I don't want, but I'm saying your no's as well. And that's really bringing the energy um, <clears throat> into, my, into my throat, actually, because I'm saying I'm speaking my truth and I'm uh, standing uh, in my own, um, uh, in my own uh, centeredness and being confident to say no. <laughs> so Lena is standing in her shower and she, <laughs> the floor is wet. So Ageda, when you say no to not believing in myself, very powerful and, uh, 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 and no to all stress. Yes, we are all connected. So yeah, stand up, say what you say no to, say whatever you want to say no to. This is for you. Feel it in your body, feel it in your soul. Uh, <clears throat> that's the most important thing. Three things at least you want to say no to. As we can see, you have more than three things. No to give, to give space and time to other people but me. I love that you're saying this and I want to stop on this a little bit. You know, we have a tendency as women to have that guilt of, because I'm giving myself uh, first, I'm a bad person. And I always give this image and I love this image. Um, and I always give this image to my client, which is the, uh, the oxygen mask in an emergency. And it's like, you put it on yourself first before you serve other people. When your, or when your energy is overflowing, then it's easier for us to give to others. This is why um, it's important. It is not selfish as everyone is saying. It is, we become even more powerful. We become even more givers and we become unstoppable when we take care of our own energy. And I needed to say that because that's very important. And if people make you feel guilty about giving your attention for yourself, it's important to create a loving boundary around that because the whole purpose is to have energy for others, but you have to have energy for yourself first before giving to others. All right, so I'm sure you've got a lot of things you, um, you wanna say no to. So. By the way, my mom is on the call. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> so uh, it's amazing. So yeah, my mom is on the call and uh, it feels so good to have mom. Um, so uh, balance is a myth. And very often when I get to work with women, uh, whether it's in corporate or it's in, uh, you know, it's in personal, uh, on a personal level, there's always that thing where we talk about, I need to do this work-life balance. It has to be work-life balance. And balance is a myth. And I love to give the metaphor of the bicycle. Most of you know how to ride a bicycle, right? Uh, riding a bicycle is always about micro movements. And you need to do these micro movements to stay in balance. So um, it's important to keep in the motion. 
because most of the time there's a misconception for women that balance means everything is like it's like everything is still but it's not it's always in constant motion it's always moving and so with this with this uh, thought of always being in, in, in dynamism, in a forward motion, in action, what I'm saying is not busyness, but in that movement, we need to take care of ourselves, okay? And when women are actually coming to me and saying, uh, Shireen, I need to feel that there's work-life balance in my life, like things are crazy and so on and, 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 and so forth. Um, I say, you need to stop and look at how you are taking care of yourself. And of course, part of it is doing less, which we, we covered a bit. Top, part of it is, uh, part of self-care is also saying no, by the way, uh, to your energy drains uh, and everything that we've, uh, we've covered before. But also, it's how you nourish yourself. How do you nourish yourself? How do you take care of yourself? You know, very often people think, oh, self-care is being in a spa and doing a, you know, a, a facial or, you know, putting a mask on and, 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 and doing a manicure and a pedicure and doing your hair. And mind you, it is part of it, but this is not the only way to self-care. It's not only that. Because when, 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 when men and women think of that, then all of a sudden, they think, oh my God, guilty, I need to, I'm taking care of myself. It means that I'm not taking care of others and I'm feeling guilty right now. So it's not only about that, but it's about the time that you give for your own pleasure, for your own self-nourishment, uh, for your own self-care, um, um, how do you recharge your batteries? Like you need to ask yourself this because as ambitious women, we also need to rest. It's not only about go, 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 go. What's next? What's, uh, what I need to do? Oh, I need to, cry. I always need to feel busy. I always need to prove my worth because I'm being productive and because I'm doing this and that. No, it's also about doing nothing or doing whatever. For me, it's maybe doing nothing. For me, it's creativity. Like I nourish myself with creativity, with family, with nothingness, with nature, with meditation, with movement, with dance. This is how I replenish myself and how I, I um, uh, recharge my batteries. But you need to start noticing that as ambitious women, sometimes it's harder to, to stop and have that moment for yourself so you can replenish and top up your energy and keep going. And only you can do that. Remember when I shared with you that I'm a burnout survivor? This is one of the lessons that I learned. There are moments where we need to, and this needs to be like, we need to replenish and nourish ourselves. And this looks differently for each and every one of us. So I want you, um, I want you to share, like how is your way of self-nourishment? And, and it's, and it can be so different. Be inspired by one another, maybe giving each other ideas. Yeah, journaling can be um, can be a way to going for a walk, a daily walk. <laughs> that replenishes me as well. Meditating, drawing, walking in nature, cooking, hiking, yoga, dancing, journaling. Um, those are breath work. Mm -hmm. Notice also the moments where you're curious as well, you know, things you do out of curiosity. Um, and researches you do also replenishes you, you know, if you're uh, listening to music, writing, grounding, meditation. So deep sleeping, beautiful nature walks. So we have a lot of walkers and dancers and <clears throat> reading mysteries. 
nothing work related, I hope so. <laughs> so cooking, dancing, chocolate. Oh, yes, I'm a dark chocolate lover. <laughs> okay, so um, how do you recharge your batteries? And this is so important as you're moving forward. How do you replenish your energy? Give yourself this moment to really notice and know that this is an important component of your personal success. This is what is going to keep you going. If you have a practice or practices that makes you replenish your energy, keep going with it. If you don't, figure out what it is and start putting it as a ritual every day. Do you ask for help? By the way, this is part of self-care. If you are someone who is not asking for help, um, this is going to deplete your energy. So asking for help, hey, who can help me with that? I don't know how to do this. Reach out. Most of women do not ask for help and this leads to burnout. This leads to feeling overwhelmed, okay? Do you delegate? So if you're at work or, you know, even in your, in, as an entrepreneur, um, as well, delegating is part of asking for help. If you, you need to learn to delegate because bye-bye perfectionism, no to perfectionism, no to controlling, no to, you know, feeling overwhelmed. Who can do this be better? Delegating is an important muscle that I work a lot with, uh, with my clients because this is what makes you remove all your um, all the things that needs to be out of the way um, so you can start putting energy on what really needs to be done and what do you say yes to so we are going to end with what you want to say yes to so we are reaching What do you want to say yes to with everything that we've done today? What do you want to say yes to? Share in the comments. Yes to new mindset. Yes to watching sunset. Yes to more of this conversation. Yes to taking risk. Yes to love. Yes to, yes to stop all the no's. Yes to Shireen. Thank you. <laughs> yes to me. Yes to traveling. Yes to positivity and focusing on myself. Yes to trying new things, getting outside, uh, to, peace, to a peaceful me. Yes to adventures. Yes to joy. Um, beautiful. Yes to discovering. Yes to saying no. Absolutely. Give yourself permission to that. Yes to being, to, to being positive and good vibe. Yes to meeting new people and networking. Um, yes to love. Yes to more authenticity. Uh, yes to always moving forward. Yes to taking a breath. Yes to dream, to happiness, to inner peace. Lovely. Keep them coming. Yes to opportunities, to new horizon. How powerful your yeses is, are. <laughs> yes to allow mistakes, beautiful. Yes to adopting a baby. Yes to, to deep sleep, to forgiveness, to forgiving. Yes to life. <laughs> yes to commitment to a new me, how beautiful. Somebody else is saying yes to adopt a baby too. You see how sharing creates that ripple effect where we <clears throat> give permission for ourselves to be and then we allow others to be as well. Yes to forgiveness. So any cues, let us know in the comments. Lena, please come back. We want to listen to you. We have a couple of things we want to share with you. Everyone, please share. Am I back? Question. Yes, you are back. Well, yes, yes to this. Yes to more of these conversations. Yes to Shireen. Yes to this awesome book. Yes, yes to, to <laughs> the, the crew, the crew at uh, LAU New York who handled all of this so beautifully. Yes to the Arab Institute for Women. 
for um, enabling us to put on these awesome events. So yes, to, to all of you joining me in the shower. Um, <laughs> and yes, to more of this. And we have promised Shireen and I that we are gonna continue. This is not a one-off, this is a conversation. This is something that we'd like to do on a regular basis. Please watch this space. Um, so we are, we're in it, we're committed um, and very, very much yes. Um, most, most of all, yes to all of you who engage so passionately and powerfully and who shared your thoughts. The chat has been incredible to watch. It is on fire and very much yes to that. I could barely, I could barely follow through. <laughs> Beautiful energy. Keep going for uh, whatever you said you wanted to go. This is the way to stay connected. Um, uh, Lina and I are going to be having uh, uh, talks that are women-centric. It's going to be different than what we've done today because today is my workshop uh, uh, and it's in collaboration uh, with uh, um, the Arab S Institute for Women. So uh, Lena invited me for, for, for me to actually have this workshop for my community and for her community. But moving forward, we are going to have other more women-centric conversations that are from the heart, uh, where we tackle uh, different uh, topics that are very, um, uh, very on point for, for all of us women. Uh, and so you can uh, actually get uh, the news on that uh, in that um, link that I shared with you, uh, which is uh, uh, sharingkurdi.com forward slash newsletter uh, little dash ENV. And this is a specific newsletter that is going to be in relationship to, uh, to the talks that Lena and I are going to be embarking on. Uh, and we're so excited to, uh, to have you um, with us, joining us. So we will let you know. So if you want to know about these talks, please subscribe. Um, I, I, so I, okay, if you want me to share, I'll share the link in, I'm going to stop my, uh, I'm going to share the link in the comments so you can have that link. Just stay with me, bear with me. So if you want to be on the mailing list for us to share with you uh, <clears throat> our events, I'm gonna share this in the chat box. So there are two links here, something that you asked before. Um, so, here you go. So for those of you who want to access and know more about my book, you can access this link, which, which is, uh, <clears throat> sharingkurdi.com forward slash book. And for those of you who want to get on the newsletter to know on our next talks, uh, Lena and I, those are powerful talks. Uh, we are here to, to challenge you to play a bigger game in your personal life and in your work life and in your relationships. Uh, then please subscribe to the link that I share with you uh, a few moments ago. Uh, so, so yeah, and yes, so the book is available, uh, in, um, so if you want to, so, okay, I'm just gonna put this in the link. So for those of you, it's going to be available on all our social media, mine, Shireen's yeah, and so the Institute. Okay. So for those of you who uh, want to order the book, uh, just very quickly, it's available online on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all your local bookstores. Now, I know some of you, for example, in Lebanon, probably uh, you either need to go to your local bookstore and, and just show them the book. Uh, I mean, you just send them the link of the book and they will order it for you. So this is the way to do it. And the second way is if you want a signed copy, you can actually um, email me directly and I'll get you sorted. Uh, I'm just going to put my uh, email in the, in the comments. You just, you know, put a subject, signed copy, and uh, we'll, take, we'll take it from there. 
So uh, if you have any questions, we're wrapping up. Uh, we want it to be on the dot with the time. So uh, we're, ten, we're 10 minutes over, which says something about everybody's enthusiasm because no one is leaving. <laughs> you all are amazing. We should allocate more time for this next time. So, yeah, so, so, so yes, if you have any questions, you let me know. If you have any other questions, you can email me at info at For those of you who actually want to be on the mailing list for our next talks, be sure to subscribe on the link that I shared with you earlier. Get in touch with us. And um, I feel very privileged to do this work. I want to thank you, Lina, for um, bringing your community in today. Uh, thank you for all of you for your honesty and for, for, for bringing your heart, your hut, your heart and your guts today. I felt the power in the room and, um, and it made me feel really uh, warm and fuzzy. And this is why I challenge you even more. Thank you so much for your precious time. And uh, once you create things, share with us, share with Lena, share with me. Uh, we always love to hear uh, what you're creating, especially when it comes to doing things that are beautiful in the world, whether it's with your family or with your friends or it's in your work. Uh, we love stories about hope and about caring and about really living your mission uh, in this lifetime. Thank you all. We're signing off uh, with a lot of love and to be continued. Hope this conversation has in fact lit you up. I know it has for me. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.